You booked it, episode 199. What's going on, everyone? Thank you for joining me today on You Booked It, the number one podcast where you learn how to create a successful entertainment career. Have you joined the You Booked It community yet? It is your go-to entertainment career resource. Inside, you'll have direct access to Broadway performers, Emmy nominees, and people just like yourself navigating this industry. Learn from those walking the walk. Build industry relationships, access unlimited masterclasses, and learn how to book the job more consistently. Join free today, tap the link in the show notes, or go to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash invite to get inside. And now, let's meet today's guest. Okay, let's kick this off. I am excited to introduce my guest today, Jorge Casco. Are you ready for this, Jorge? Yes, sir, I'm ready. Brilliant. Jorge is the current co-owner and executive director for Fly Dance Company, the gentleman of hip-hop. At age 14, he saw Fly perform at his school. By age 17, he was touring with the group. Fly is a world-renowned dance company with over 25 years' experience working with schools, communities, nonprofits, and corporations that also tours and performs around the globe. They also are one of the few theatrical hip-hop dance companies that perform with symphonies such as the Baltimore Symphony, Cleveland Pops, Cincinnati Symphony, and many, many more across the USA. Fly's style is theatrical hip-hop. They blend acting, unusual props, colorful costumes, and street dance to give the audience something new. Jorge is also the host of the Mad Discussions podcast where they discuss music, art, dance, and other life topics, and he also wrote Henry the Hip-Hop Hippo, a children's book that teaches kids to be who they were created to be themselves. Jorge, I know that is a very condensed and quick bio of who you are, what you've done, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, fill in the gaps, and a little bit more about what you do as a professional in the entertainment industry. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I come from a large family of Honduras, Central American descent. Both parents grew up with them, and it was an exciting life. It was something that always kept me on the edge of my toes. I was the middle child, so I always had to get their, their attention. So I was somebody that loved to perform, performing with my family as a kid at the church, and then eventually moving into the performing arts. I ended up working with Fly as, as a youth, and now I manage and book Fly Dance Company, and we do tours all over the U.S. Yeah, brilliant. So cool. I'm excited to get into that throughout this interview. But let's first move on to this section here. And Jorge, look, I am a sucker for a good quote. What is your favorite quote you'd like to share with everyone? My favorite quote is, you know, always be a student. I don't know mm. exactly where it came from, but I know I heard my mom say it when growing up and I heard the artistic director, which is my mentor, Kathy Wood, say the same thing. And yeah. for me, always learning something new keeps you on your toes. So I always love that. 100% because it's easy to get stagnant, especially if you get into the groove of, say, touring or the groove of a contract or whatever it might be, or just that freelance grind, you get into the groove of life and you forget, look, I still need to be pushing the envelope, learning more, adding to my tool belt of skills and creating more relationships. So always keeping that ball moving forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just always having, you know, those tools in front of me to, to be able to just expand the mind and, and you always make sure that you can have things that allow you to be more creative and just keep learning and keep adapting and moving into different spaces. Yeah, totally. Well, let's dig into this next section here. And Jorge, of course, you are an entertainer. I'm an entertainer. And I think that you'd agree that this industry can be one of the most subjective, brutally honest, and personally emotional industries in existence. And you know, as well as I, that in order to create and have a successful career in this industry, like you're having now, takes a lot of dedication and hard work. And while, yes, there is an outrageous amount of fun and excitement being an entertainer, doing what we do, 
there are also our fair share of obstacles, challenges, and failures we are going to experience and we're going to have to move forward through. So tell us, what is one key challenge, obstacle, or failure you've experienced in your career and how did you come out the other side better because of it? I think for us, as we represent the hip hop culture, right, we blend mm. classical music with street dance and it has a bad stigma. Hip hop, people say that hip hop could be rude, it could be offensive, it can be uh, not a positive type of uh, music or industry. And those things may be true, but we're focusing on the actual movement itself. A lot of people forget that hip hop is a young genre. So you got to think about what you were doing when you were in your you're in your 30s. So hip hop hasn't had a chance to evolve as uh, jazz or rock and roll and a lot of these other genres, classical music. So what happens with hip hop, it tends to be put in this box. So when mm -hmm. we're presenting hip hop uh, to different audiences, we try to do things outside the box. That's why the props and the dancing to different styles of music and live sound effects is important for us. And we've also going back to the different types of music, hip hop, and rock and roll and jazz, a lot of these have a lot of similarities, right? Even classical music was known as like the pop pop music of its time, you know? Of course. They, yeah. um, and rock and roll has had its wild side and ups and downs with losing artists like Janis Joplin or Jimi mm -hmm. Hendrix, right? And then jazz yeah. went through its through its phase during the in the early years uh, with the, with a lot of the drug usage within that. And classical music has had eccentric eccentric composers and and there was riots would happen <laughs> certain classical composers and i think even one you, you know, classical music uh composer actually i have even had a situation where his his wife passed away because, you know due to him so there's a lot of things that you know that hip-hop gets accused of right and but we tend to forget that these are things that has happened in every genre of music right so now moving forward to to what hip-hop is really about which is representing the culture love and respect and we focus on those acts aspects and that those have been the biggest challenges to present hip-hop in a fun clean way that is for all all ages and doing it with the movement itself it's athletic it's we pull from different places from capoeira brazilian martial art from house which is a like a, another way of tap dancing but without the tap shoes and these guys are gymnasts they're doing flares and handstands and all kinds of stuff so this is something that we're presenting it to music like night king cole we're dancing to earth within fire we're dancing to beethoven we're dancing just a fun type of environment so when people come to see us they say hey this is this is a great way to introduce hip-hop to a more sophisticated audience in a great way to introduce different genres of music to a more younger audience. Yeah, I think that's so cool. And I think, like you said, the hip hop genre, broadly speaking, is a newer genre of music, right? Mm -hmm. When you compare it to, you know, Baroque music, right? Uh, right? But at the end of the day, it's all creative. We It's always artists that are creating this music and artists always tend to have a bit of uh, eccentricities, if you will, <laughs> mm -hmm. about them. And that's just always the way. And like you said, all the music of its time has always been the popular music of its time and came with it the different characters that come along that maybe aren't so good or don't in the history books don't shine too well or brightly on the genre as a whole. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's just the growing pains of any kind of creativity or any genre. And I think it's fantastic that you guys are doing that and really going into symphonies and orchestra situations and performing in that arena. It's so cool. First off, performing on stage with a live orchestra is outrageously exciting. But just meshing together as many styles as possible, bringing that positivity and just the awareness of an art form, I think is an amazing thing. Absolutely. I think it's for us, it validates us. It lets us, mm -hmm. it lets people know, like say, Hey, guess what? This group, the gentlemen of hip hop, this is a, a name that we take. We're very proud of this name. It wasn't a name that we gave ourselves. This is a name that the presenters and the agents and the management companies that would see us at conferences and after the shows, they would come up to us and say, Hey, you guys are so polite. You guys are, it's, you know, so here comes the gentleman of hip hop. You know, hey, what's up? Or, hey, what's it doing? How's it going? Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, how are the gentlemen of hip hop doing? And we started laughing and they, and it was a thing that they called us that for years. So when we rebranded, we say, you know what, let's use that and yeah. put it, put it in, in the forefront. And once we did, that's when we got the attention of the symphonies through Randy Chaplin. And he, he worked with a lot of these symphonies. So he's the liaison between the agent that kind of connects us with all these symphonies. 
if in order for them to say, hey, you know what, we're going to take this group, this hip hop theatrical group, and we're going to partner with them and we're going to create a whole evening show. And we go back and forth. They we do a Zoom call and we take and we compare a notes and say this classical piece is great or this movement would be great with this. And we give them a list of what stuff that we have. And mm. we have over 40 pieces of, of music that we can actually perform to. And we would do the whole Duke Ellington Nutcracker as well. So they're already amazed by the fact that we can do all these things. And then we get into the we get into their town. Then we go into the community and do workshops and classes and go into detention centers. And we go to boys and girls clubs, anywhere where, where they allow us to go on behalf of the symphonies and places where they probably weren't able to go before because Fly allows them to bridge that gap. And that's why, it's, you know, we've had so, so much success with the U.S. embassies and you know, working with the State Department, and that was something that was attractive to them. And that's something that's attractive to, to the symphonies to say, hey, you know what? We're more alike than we are different. We're all dealing with the same things. And music allows us to move forward and dance, allows Fly to move forward. Now let's come together and impact the youth and, you know, shatter those stereotypes on both ends. Oh, that's so good. Shatter those stereotypes. I think it's fantastic that you also, you don't just take the gig and go perform with the orchestra, but you're taking it to the next level. So when you show up, you're you're going into the communities. And I think that's so important because I think there's a lot of different industries at the moment that just keep getting more and more expensive, not just the arts, lots yeah. of things, but they get more expensive. And with it, they become less accessible to so many people. And mm -hmm. the thing is, we don't need to be coveting music and dance and art for an elite group of people. It's silly. Of course, these things need to make money to or get sponsorships from different companies or something so they can continue to do what they do. There's money is absolutely a real part of, of the show business aspect of it. But we need to remember that we all enjoy this stuff and we need to be introduced to it and know that it even exists and learn to build an appreciation for it if we're ever going to be those theater goers or the symphony goers throughout our lives. Absolutely. I think it's important to expose the youth to it. I didn't even know you could do this as a hobby or do this as a living. We weren't exposed to the, the Broadway and we weren't exposed to ballet and all these things that a lot of people grow up with going to the theater. Going, We didn't have the funding at our schools growing up and yeah. we just lived our own little bubble. It wasn't until dance that that allowed me to open my mindset. Right. At 14, I started breakdancing in my local neighborhood. And then next thing you know, I go to Middle Outdoor Theater here in Houston, Texas. And out here in Houston, we have this amphitheater. And I'm walking up the hill with a couple of my buddies. And we're 14 teens running around, just being silly, dancing on the grass, goofing around. And I hear this classical music blaring from the theater. And, and I turn around and there's these guys break dancing doing the moves that i was trying oh, to do cool. yeah, <laughs> and they're dancing yeah. they're doing this piece to it's called a uh, claire de lune and the, the name of the piece was called eclair the beginning is this hip-hop and the middle is this gooey sweet piece of uh, classical music and at the end is hip-hop and they were on the middle section and i see this guy go out there on the skateboard and he's hands in the air doing some ballet move on the skateboard and the whole audience just erupts and for me that was that little life of that said I think that's what I want. No, I know I want to do that. But if it wasn't for my curiosity or even dance, me getting into that dancing, yeah. I wouldn't even been exposed to that. But that was that little light bulb. I think I want to do that. Did you know building industry relationships are the most important assets you need to create a long lasting entertainment career? And don't take my word for it. Guest after guest here on the podcast have attributed some of their biggest career moments to their relationships. That is why you need to get yourself inside the You Booked It community. You'll learn what you need to do to get noticed and make sure your headshot stays in the callback pile so you can book the gig more consistently and create a successful career. Tap the link in the show notes or go to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash invite to get inside free today. Beautiful. Well, that segues us really easily. And I think you might have just given it away. But your spotlight moment, that one time you realized, yeah, this is what I, not, I need to be doing for a living or what I want to be doing as an entertainer. Is it that moment? I think that moment alongside with I saw a movie and there was this movie called Beach Street. 
And I remember sitting there and just seeing this little this clip of this movie. And there was these guys dancing. And there's this scene where they're just dancing and they're spinning on their heads and stuff. And I remember just like catching like maybe 30 seconds of it. And then the channel switched. And that sparked my curiosity. And then going to school, I saw a group of guys that were dancing. Then I moved to these apartments and I seen them doing some moves. And I was like, okay, that's pretty interesting. And then walking with that same group. I was still shy at the time. But I think that seeing them and trying to do some of those moves, but then seeing it on that stage, it yeah. was just, and then seeing the reaction of those people, it's like 5,000 people out there just screaming. I was just blown away by that. I think that was, I think a combination from watching that video got my interest. And then me, I, like, it's funny because in my area where I grew up at, there was a lot of gang activity, right? There's a mm. lot of. There's a lot of grew up in a pretty rough area in uh, in Los Angeles and then moved to, to Houston, Texas in the, in the early 90s. And I remember leaving L.A. thinking we were going to come to Texas and it was going to be cows and cactuses and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and it really wasn't that. It was the total opposite. Man, I just left one neighborhood and went to another, you know. And then that apartment complex where I lived it just so happened to be to have this dance group that was like very popular. And it was like the only apartment complex that there was like um, all the other apartment complexes had gangs and we had we had all kinds of stuff there too but it was the only apartments that had like these break dancers that lived in there and we were it's funny because we were looking at different places to live and it's, we could only afford a certain amount and then we ended up living there and it's a coincidence it's like i get there boom there's all this negative stuff happening around me but this dance Somehow it was, it was calling me. Why did I click the channel and that out of all the movies, that thing was there, you know, and then I'm, and I'm moving to these apartments and then I got class with one of the guys and I'm like sitting there. You guys are the ones that are dancing at lunch. Yeah, man, come hang out with us. And they were just really, open, you know, welcoming and they weren't trying to get me into trouble. They were just like, oh, man, stay away from that stuff. Let's go over here. And I felt like it was my calling. Oh, I love that story. So good. And let's piggyback on that real quick and talk about your number one booked it moment walk us through that day what was going on in your life and what about that moment makes it your favorite booked it moment this was it was already a few years into me performing and yeah at the time we had fly was around in the early since 95 and in the 2000s like 2006 it went into a hiatus from 2012 i was able to step in and talked to the owners of the company and took it over and as, as owner and we basically just had like the name, a piece of paper saying that I won't fly. So then rebuilding the team with my two business partners, Chris Cortez and Adam Kuros, we built it up to where, okay, where we started with a small tour, that tour elevated us to get an agency, work with an agency. We leveled up. We honored that contract. We started moving up and we got the contract with the, the state, uh, the state department, and we're moving forward. But then in the midst of that, I remember having conversations with our team in the earlier years saying, hey, well, one day I'm going to see us performing with these symphonies. And I remember us live, we were in this small little apartment. And basically, like, you could touch the wall and the other wall. <laughs> it's like a kitchen. <laughs> the living I had an room. like that once, yeah. <laughs> the, the great thing is, like, we're sitting in this uh, apartment, but, like, it's an office. So there's no living room. There's just a computer, a laptop, or washer and dryer. So we're, like, sitting on a, on a imagine, like, three guys sitting, like, on these, on boxes of, like, shirts and costumes. And then there's another washer and dryer. Someone's sitting on top of there. And I'm sitting on the desk. And the other guy's sitting in the chair. And we're, like, we have a dry erase board. And we're writing down everything, all, all our, everything we want to do. And so, so far, it's, like, we're, okay, we want a tour. Boom, we knocked it off. We want to perform uh, overseas. Boom, we knocked it off. We want to international and work with the State Department. Boom, boom. Everything that we said that day, looking back, we're, we're just knocking off the list, knocking off the list, knocking off the list. And like looking back at it now, it was just an emotional moment. But I remember saying, okay, we're going to go and we're going to work with symphonies. I remember the guys, they tell the story now, like, we thought you were nuts, buddy. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> now we had your back. We, we understand that. We're with you, man. But now you're talking a little out of, you know, okay, we don't know where this is going. So we fast forward, we go to this booking conference and we were there for two years in a row. And this third year, it's really hard to, to make a name for yourself. And this it's called APAP uh, New Year Conference where agents, presenters, managers, and theaters, they all go there. They book these acts, right? 
and it's expensive. No one wants to go. And there's fees and all kinds of stuff. So you want to have a, you want to be consistent and you want to be in the same booth every year. Well, this particular year, we didn't get our booth and we were very upset about that. And for whatever reason, they didn't have it available. I think the booths range from $800 to $2,500. And we had an $800 budget. So that's, that's how we can afford because we still got to fly out there, showcase and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, in New York, in New York's expensive, and for a little company that could, we're saving all our peanuts, all our coins, saving all our performances every class, and we're throwing it back into this company. So we're we're like, okay, man, we we can't, we can't, we have to have this booth, and then we try to get it. We're a month ahead of schedule to try for this particular conference. Everything got sold out months ahead of time. So I think we were a few days late or something, and they're like, yeah, we just got rid of that. We can't. We have something upstairs. And we didn't know. We're like, man, we want to be upstairs. It turns out, well, that's where you need to be. This is where all the major players are up there. And it's the three, it's three floors. It's the first floor, second floor, third floor. I've been to this conference before as a performer, but never as a director. So now I'm like, okay, I guess let's go up there and see what happens. This is, so we're in the, we're in the, the booth right across the way. is Randy Chaplin from Randy Inter- or Chaplin Entertainment. Now this man, this amazing man, he was, uh, Yo-Yo Ma's agent for a while. He did a, maybe 10 or 15 years with the Morris agency. Um, he worked at ICM, one of the top, you know, agents in the in the business. He's actually the one that did all the symphony engagements for the Morris agency. It's a real big agency in New York. Now, the guy next to me is telling me how great this guy is, but I don't really know. So I'm sitting there and I'm looking at his roster. He Marie Osmond, you know, uh, you name it. Some top bags, excuse me. He has a lot of people on his roster from and it's he pays pretty much books everybody with the symphonies. You can go to his yeah. to his site and check it out. But so we're sitting there and I've been looking at his booth, and every 15 minutes he has somebody coming and, and meeting with them. Now we had a really good rapport for Fly has in the earlier years and everything. So we had a lot of people coming up to us as well, but everybody else is quiet. So he's noticing that these young guys were in like our late twenties at this time. So who are these three dudes standing there at this booth? Everybody out there is kind of, you know, gray hair, older gentlemen, the older women, and who are these young guys? And they have their their booth just it's kind of like he got some traffic going on. So he comes by and he's let me tell you something. He's come here. He's like, you know, have you ever thought of dancing with symphonies? I almost fell out on my. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a fainted, and I, he so I'm trying to keep my composure. I'm literally doing backflips in my head. I'm like, yeah, of course, this is what I've always wanted. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, then yeah. he's just he's like trying to sell it to me. Like, look, man, I, you know, I go look. You see, this is my roster. This is all the people that I have. And then at the time, yeah, like David Hasselhoff, yeah, Francesco Feliciano, he had. He, uh, oh, he, he still has Rita Moreno, Academy Award winner, Grammy Award. Like she has all like the seven Grammy, Tony, snacks. She had all kinds of acts. The list goes on and on. And he's telling me all these people. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is some pretty interesting people you got here. And they're all musicians, no dancers. And I'm just like, he's yeah. He's like, what if we did something to where I can get the symphonies, you bring the guys, and we'll do some collaborations. And it was like that second right there. To where I just I like I I closed my eyes and I could see it. I visualized us performing with symphonies. Mm. I, saw, I see us touring the world. I see us going. It's just like one of those like <sighs> real quick boom. I snap out of it. And he gives me his card and I just gave him like a smirk. And he like he's like you all right, kid. I'm like I like I go. Do you understand what you just did? <laughs> he's like he's like look, call me. So it that was the initial moment. It took us three years to get everything ready to start. So we started our first, we did our first symphony in 2018. And in the midst of all that, it was like, hey, call me in three months. I'm restaffing. Boom, call them in three months. After that, it's call me in six months. I got to honor these contracts and I can give you my undivided attention. Six months call. Hey, what's up, Randy? Okay, I need uh, some video. I need this, that, get it done. Call me in three months. Call them in three months. Okay, I got this video. I reached out to a local uh, orchestra here in the city to get some experience. We put a show, an event together. It was a success. He's like, all right, give me some footage. And I sent him the footage. We need a different type. So it's like he's just giving me a play-by-play. And it took almost like yeah. three years for us to get it there, get us there. Now to where now the, the symphonies are rolling in. We started 2020 was our year, but obviously with the whole COVID thing, we're reassessing. We're this year we have the Missouri Symphony, the Toledo Symphony, we have a Florida, Florida, oh. Florida 
Orchestra Symphony, and we have the Youngstown Symphony. So just for this year, next year, we're probably going to double or triple those. So it's just been a wild ride, but having him, long story long, like I say, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, 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 to have that meeting and then for it to be like, okay, we weren't even supposed to be there in the first place. We ended up there and we we're like, all right, let's just keep pushing through. And then he approaches us. I, we didn't even approach him. He approached us. He's like, I like this. Look, these guys in these tuxedos. And I see that you guys got a lot of traffic here. Let me tell you something. Let, let me, you know, he's pitching it to me. I'm in my mind. I'm like, you had me at, hey. <laughs> so, <it's> like, <laughs> so that's, so, and we're great friends to this day, man. He's such, he, he took a gamble. Not even a gamble. He just took, he, he just, he gave us that opportunity. We just got off the road right now. We were in Burlington, Burlington Iowa. And the lady there, Miss Barbara McRoberts, she's such a beautiful person. And I was telling her, I don't know if you really understand what you're doing when you book a group like Fly. And she's like, oh, tell me. I said, look, the fact that you said yes to us means that when we went to that school, we went to, those, to that dance studio and we worked with those kids, we expose them to something positive where maybe 90% of those kids in those, in that, in those classes attended the concert. Now we're building these memories with them. Right. And then you saying yes to us, the community here came to see fly. Now they're going back. We had kids and, and people dancing in the hall and, and down the aisles and stuff. And afterwards, they all stuck around and took pictures with the guys. COVID safe, of course. But it was one of those things that I was like, I don't know if you understood when you booked this because it's, it's not just you bringing us here, but you're validating us and letting people know, hey, this art form is real. And these guys are doing positive things with that. So every time that we're booked, we always thank those presenters. We write a handwritten thank you. Know, thank you so much. I don't know if you how, how important this is. I, I hope you know what you're doing. And you these kids that, you know, that I have this dream. I always wanted to do this. Once I was exposed to this, I was like, one day I'm going to run to the company. My friends rolled down the hill that day at Miller Arthur Theater. And 20 years later, I'm actually doing it. And it hasn't been an easy journey, but it's like every time these presenters book us, it's like you're impacting the youth. It's, that's why I think that's so important in working with the symphonies because it's putting that stamp on fly. It's putting that stamp on the hip hop that this movement, that this culture is here to stay. It's a billion dollar business. It's not going anywhere. And a lot of the imagery is negative. So why not push the positive side of it, which it was intended to be self-identity, self-expression, culture, love, and respect of your community. And we're just honored to be able to do that with the symphony. Oh, that's so good. I think that story is amazing. That journey that you and Fly has had is absolutely, like, it's a, like a storybook. It's a so good. And Thank you. I want to move on to the present and talk about what you got going on now? It sounds like you guys are incredibly busy and it's still amidst this global pandemic. How do you see the entertainment industry moving forward in the next couple of years with everything opening up again? I see the industry moving in more of a digital space. I mm -hmm. see a lot of companies adapting to that. You have to, if you don't adapt to it, it's going to be hard for you to continue when, when there are moments like this, right? So for us, it pushed us to go you know, towards our podcast as we started our podcast. Now we're also creating all our programs, our educational classes, workshops, residencies in a digital platform to where you can, a uh, school or a venue could can come to our site or reach out to us and they can lease our virtual classes to where we send them a, uh, a list of, of programs that we offer, where it's hip hop, dance, you know, art, music, different things, different programs that we offer. And then whether it's pre-recorded or we could do a something that's already that we could do like a Zoom call with a Zoom class or something. So those are things that that have kind of pushed us into more of that digital space. So allowed us to do those things, which I think is beneficial because now it's creating other streams of income that we can actually have access to. Then before it was just basically like merch and performances and things of that nature. Now we have merch performances and these other sources to where we can get generate some income. So I think it's been a great experience for us, a great learning experience. It hasn't been easy, of course, but if you get it going, it could be very lucrative. Yeah, very cool. And it is time to move on to one of my favorite sections in the interview. I call it the Grease Lightning Round. I cool. am going to ask you a handful of questions. I want you to answer them as quickly and concisely as possible, one after another. Are you ready? 
Yes, sir. All right, first question. What was the one thing holding you back from committing to a career as an entertainer? Myself, I think I just overthought it. But once I said, that's what I'm going to do, I did it. Second question. What is the best piece of advice you have ever received? Like I mentioned before, always be a student. When you stop learning, you stop living. Oh, so true. Third question. What is something that is working for you right now? Or if you'd like to go pre-COVID, what was working for you before our industry went on pause? I think for me, one of the biggest tools is LinkedIn. We can reach out to all the professionals and look for all kinds of leads and contacts. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Fourth question. What is your best resource? Whether that is a book, a movie, a YouTube video, maybe a podcast or piece of technology you found is helping your career right now. Yeah, I think that podcasts are very informative. And then actually watching the podcast on the actual YouTube to see how they put their clips together. That helps us that. And then, like I said, LinkedIn's great and reading all types of books and just things that that are gonna allow you to build your craft more. You know, anything inspirational books are great too. And the fifth question, if you had to start your career from scratch, but you still had all the knowledge and experience you've collected from your career in this industry, what would you do or not do? Would you do anything differently or would you keep it the same? I would save more money. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line, I would save it, save more and invest more. That's what I would do. For sure. And the last question, what is the golden nugget knowledge drop you've learned from your successful career in this industry you'd like to leave with our listeners? Don't give up. Don't give up. It's not an easy road and nothing in life is easy. But if, if you set your standards high, you know, we'll never be perfect. Just understand that. Let excellence be your floor. Strive for perfection will never be perfect. But at least if you try, you'll be further along. Than you were. You, we're not happy. Or we're further along to where we were. We still got a lot of places, a lot of more learning to do, or at least we're moving forward and, and living our dreams. Yes. You said, let excellence be your floor. I love that. And to wrap up this interview, Jorge, it is time to give yourself a plug. Where can we find you? How do our listeners connect with you? Is there anything you want to promote? Just go to our website, flydancecompany.com, F-L-Y-D-A-N-C-E-C-O-M-P-A-N-Y.com. Find us on Instagram at flydancecompany, same, spelled the same, F-L-Y-D-A-N-C-E-C-O-M-P-A-N-Y. And look for us, Mad Discussions podcast on all streaming services, and that's where you can find us. Beautiful. And for everyone listening out there, I have put the links to everything Jorge just said into the description of this episode. So you can go check out Fly and connect with them. Also, be sure to share this podcast with your fellow entertainers, coaches, teachers, arts and entertainment educators, and anyone you know aspiring to create a career in the entertainment industry. You Booked It is the number one resource of expertise on how to actually create a successful entertainment career. Case in point, everything Jorge dropped today, his incredible journey through this industry. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Jorge, thank you so much for jumping on, doing this interview. I'm so glad that we got connected. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for, for giving, you know, doing your podcast. And this is an amazing tool for everyone who's trying to get into business, someone who's in the business. So please support You Booked It on all your platforms. Thank you so much for listening today. If you enjoyed this episode and want more like it, be sure to smash that subscribe button. Also, be sure to join the You Booked It community. Inside, you can connect with your people, build industry relationships, unlock unlimited masterclasses, and access the tools and training you need to create a sustainable career momentum. Get your invite link right now Tap the link in the show notes or head over to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash invite and we'll see you there.